Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. Welcome to New York City. We are still here. It's the morning after WrestleMania 35, as you can probably hear from my voice. And I'm joined by Andy Murray and Michael Sidgwick Hello. to run through the star ratings of every match on a 16 match WrestleMania 35 card. Lots to get through. Let's dive straight into it. Starting on the free show, Andy Murray, the day started with a match for the Cruiserweight Championship between Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. Star rating for you. Three and a half. There we go. Uh, women's Battle <laughs> Royal. shows only getting star ratings. We're not laughing about here. Women's Battle Royal, Michael Sidgwick, won uh, by Carmella. Uh, two and a half. Two and, and a half. Two and a half. Ah, Being generous. On, the it's WrestleMania weekend yeah. after all. <laughs> uh, we follow that up with the Raw Tag Team match. Uh, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder versus The Revival. Andy Murray? Uh, one and a half star match, three star finish. Fair enough. And the final match on the pre show was, of course, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, where uh, Braun Strowman chucked out those goobers from SNL. What did that get for you? Purely on the basis that Andrade eliminated himself. He's an afterthought and an idiot. <laughs> one star. But I didn't get much from this. She know that Charlotte relationship for public, buddy. Let's move on to the main card now, which started unbelievably with the match for the Universal title between Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins. Andy Murray, what did you make of this? It's really hard to rate because it was so short. The match itself was technically two and a half minutes. Now under circumstances like this, you would usually say, well, no rating. But you know what? I rate matches based on enjoyment. And on reflection, I really, 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 really enjoyed this. I don't care. I'm giving this four stars. Four? Four. four. It was I'm awesome. I'm trying to agree just for the, the, the... It was awesome. The feel-good moment at the start of yeah. the night and the conclusion. And we all know Brock Lesnar's kryptonite is getting punched in the bollocks. That's my kryptonite too, actually. That's funny, isn't it? Um, I loved the poetic justice and the storytelling. So yeah, I'll go about three and a half for this, but a lovely, great angle. Yeah. Uh, Michael Sidgwick, AJ Hello. Styles versus Randy Orton came next. The story of this was the story of their entire feud, basically. The RKO and whether or not Randy Orton could hear. Yeah, they played into the dynamic of the feud well because Randy Orton's the really boring, slow and methodical WWE guy and AJ Styles is like the really frenetic indie guy who tries to actually make things happen. I was very bored during large portions of this. Randy Orton is simply too slow. Like, I'm sorry, he's too slow. Um, I went three and a quarter because there was elements of it that were quite good. Really, a really exciting finish. I love the way the RKO yeah. played throughout this. It had a nice finish. It was clean, it was crisp, it was neat and tidy. Three and a quarter sounds about right. Fair enough, let's move on to the next match which will be SmackDown Tag Team Championships. It was the Usos defending against Debar, Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev and Ricochet and Alistair Black. Uh, what did you make of this? Uh, this was really good fun. I don't think it was any kind of classic match or anything, but it was just a fun tag team scramble. I particularly loved Ricochet flipping all over the place. I think he got over in the building really well as well. Mm. Uh, three and a half. It was, it was very good. I really See, it's a bit more generous because in these matches, they all blend into one, into one another because you see so many multi-man tags. I'll remember that swing forever. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. uppercuts for abs or the beats of the Vodrum. But yes. absolutely forever. That was a great spot. So because they got something <coughs> memorable for, from something so familiar, I'm going for go in the middle three and three quarters yeah I'm mean, glad to agree with that especially because that they've also made a Tower of Doom spot that looked fantastic oh Christ well. almighty I forgot about oh, that oh with everyone oh, oh, there's awesome, so much stuff man. on this show yeah I'm four stars for this I'm sorry four, four stars let's move to four stars okay a match I know you wanted to talk about next Shane McMahon versus the Miz <laughs> balls count anywhere this was legit maybe legitimately one of the worst matches I have ever seen and I loved it it was brilliant it was a complete mess it was a shambles it was an overbooked Pizza I'm just going to do the impression of what Shane McMahon was doing to Mrs. Face at various points. <laughs> that's quite sore. Idiot! <laughs> that's, that's I think it was, I think it was Anna Nicholas that pointed out to me. Do it back. No, this is what Miz did to I'm, Shane. I'm George Mizan in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this thing sucked. The finish sucked. Everything about it sucked. And I was completely entertained. It is a dud match. But five star banner. Two and a half star. Two and a half stars. Yes. I particularly enjoyed the fact that Adam Nicholas pointed out the, well, the give us a receipt, I feel bad now. Wasn't that sort The Miz's dad has a potato <laughs> face and got potatoed by Shane McMahon. Right, let's move on next to the first five-star match of the night. It was the Women's Tag Team Championship match. <laughs> it was truly <laughs> iconic. Oh, that's why I lost the voice last night. Yeah, I didn't lose mine because I wasn't screaming like an idiot for a terrible tag team. <laughs> that's it, why oh, I that's, got my whoa. voice. It was... It let's was, put Michael over the barricade, please. Sasha and Bailey uh, defending their titles against Nia Jax and Tamina, Beth Phoenix and Natalia. Uh, the Iconics. I don't think that's everyone. Yeah, yeah. that was it. I, I, I felt like I missed the tag team out there. No, um, the Iconics won 
I love the finish of this match. In a spree of toxic masculinity, I went to the toilet, so you uh, take forward. I too <laughs> went to the toilet. Which means I get to do a star rating, and I give it five <laughs> stars. <laughs> and let's move on next to a match that probably was genuinely closer to five stars. The WWE <laughs> Championship match, <laughs> Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan. We have not had hardly any sleep here. Two hours. I know you wanted to talk a lot about this match because you were uh, buzzing after this. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. I wore my Yes, Yes, Yes t-shirt, recycled from WrestleMania 30 because I'm an ally of the planet and a non-fickle Daniel Bryan fan. I thought his work and Kofi's was absolutely sensational throughout. It's a bit strange watching WrestleMania in the stadium, so a lot of people take it as an opportunity in the in the heat and in the temperature to just watch it on the telly and not create an atmosphere. These guys had this entire stadium rocking, and it wasn't just on a endorphin rush buzz. It was everyone's heart was committed to making this moment matter. Daniel Bryan's submission work, man, the reversals were just perfect. And it was just trying to deprive people of this joy time and time again. The drama, the anxiety was so, so, so good. Honestly, I'm going five. I'm going five. I've been thinking about it. I'm going five. I have to think about it. That means I cannot go five, four and three quarters. All right, Dave. Uh, I, I, I love this match. I nibbled just as much as I did, or maybe just slightly less than I did uh, at TakeOver for Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole in terms of thinking the match was finished. At running me, this sort of grim acceptance of, oh, Daniel Bryan's won again and Kofi's not, not won, never, never going to win the big one. And uh, it was pointed out as well that Daniel Bryan, a man who had to leave the business because of concussion issues in, the, in a year, has made it to the point where we cheer a man who has had concussion issues that has cost him his career, got us cheering Kofi Kingston yeah, yeah, his yeah, yeah, got into stop. the match. Yeah. I'm going to go five stars, but more of a slightly more legitimate one than the Iconics. I'll give you that. Uh, right, next up, a one-minute match. Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship. Let's keep our review. Let's Rating it. I mean, if I was going to rate this on enjoyment, it would be five stars. I'm going to be a hypocrite and say I cannot do that. Obviously, it lasted a minute. For God's sake, Rey's obviously clearly still injured. Joe absolutely destroyed him. I don't know, man. It was fine for what it was. Two and a half. Oh, I just can't really rate it as a match yeah. because it wasn't a match. But I will say it's like a glorified angle. It really put Joe over as a total a killer, and it used the best of the air resources available. Three stars for me, this. Um, Three so stars in a minute? Yeah, exactly, but I like it. it did everything perfectly. There was a True. lovely reversal from Rey Mysterio, 619 into the Coquina Clutch. Dominic, you made the journey for nothing. Sorry, mate. Uh, Roman, <laughs> Reigns, for that. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. I don't like the taste of the Met Life. <laughs> yes, second. Ro Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre came next. Now, the crowd weren't that on the on this match. I thought both guys really paid their all in this match. It was such a shame, man. This is one of the reasons why I hate the fact that Mania is so long. It doesn't just deprive me of my enjoyment because I'm tired, but like Roman Reigns deserved a big reaction for his big WrestleMania return. I mean, I felt like such a d Like, there's a guy who's overcome a life battling, life threatening illness. I'm oh, sorry, Roman, I can't cheer you on because I'm, I'm tired from watching too much of the thing that I like. So I just felt bad watching this man, but they really did put an effort in. It bumped all over the place. Yeah, they really did. It was such a shame for Roman Reigns, man. I was absolutely glad. I really wanted him to have this. And personally, he did have this huge firing moment. He was crying in the corner when he was celebrating. Clearly meant a lot to him, but people were just burned out from that Bryan match. The way they laid out the show really hung Roman out to dry, and I'm actually quite annoyed by it, to be honest with you. What star ends we have for? Three and a half. Yeah, fine. Fair enough. Triple H versus Batista was next, the second longest match on the card. Well, no holds barred. We said all they need to do is make it this a 10 minute spot fest. It was a spot fest, it wasn't quite 10 minutes. I've given this one star purely for the two absolutely wicked bumps. Triple H's Amaga thing was pretty damn cool. Yeah. And Batista Dave took like took a, a sick thing on the steps. Oh, the, uh, he took the back body drop off one announce table onto the other as well. Really good. Yeah, there was like three wicked bumps that I got some enjoyment out of, but. Nothing, there's no connective narrative tissue between them other than them just lying down and looking like the knackered old men that they are. I generally thought, in terms of what they were trying to do, it was pathetic. Yeah, it really was. It was another masturbatory Triple H WrestleMania epic that got absolutely no reaction, aside from a couple of the bigger spots when they tried to kill themselves. The nose ring stuff was cool. Uh, the announce table stuff was cool. The, the step stuff was cool. The Ric Flair spot with the sledgehammer and all that was cool. The problem was it went on for about 13 minutes too long. What was this, 23? 24 minutes. 24 minutes. Why wasn't it 10? Why didn't you cut it down? Why didn't you get the bits where they were blowing out of their ass, chop them out? 
just have a sprint, guys. I know you're old. I know you're broken down, but you could easily have done that. Goldberg did it at WrestleMania 33. Goldberg did it at WrestleMania 33. There's no excuse, Batista. Uh, a super. I like you, Dave, man, but come on. Superman sledgehammer shot towards the finish really popped me. Uh, how many stars are you going to miss? One. One star it is. Okay. But not on that match. Oh, no, no, sorry. Nearly there. Baron Corbin versus Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's retirement match. Here he is. I know you want to talk about this one. Yeah, this was it. This was it, man. A passing of the torch from one legend to another. Uh, the bold future of this business defeating the bold past of this business. A broken down old man succumbing to the new generation. Baron Corbin, the greatest wrestler in the world. The second best big man in the history of this business. And what a victory it was. Stupid old Curry, you can't do a moonsault at your age, you silly prick. What did you think you were doing? Of course, Big Banner took you to the shops. It was an epic victory for the big breakfast. All, all Kurt Angle wanted to do was hit one last moon, sorry, one first moon <laughs> So, can't begrudge him that. What stars are we giving this? <laughs> well, I mean, you gave the Iconics five, so this is seven, brother. Two and a quarter. I mean, really, as a match, yeah, two and a quarter. It wasn't great, but Baron won. So. And the post match angle was nice, man. Yeah, really lovely. nice. Uh, Panorama match of the night was the Intercontinental Championship match. It was Mame and Bobby Lashley <laughs> taking on the demon who managed him, Finn Balor. 24 year old piece of gold. I, I want to be, be a cowboy, baby. baby. Leo Rush. Uh, I went to the loo after I watched Finn Balor's entrance because I had no interest in this, so you're going to have to tolerate yourself, boys. This match was amazing, man. This match was honestly really, really good, except absolutely nobody cared. Yeah. Like Bobby Lashley was doing things that, why haven't we been doing them all along? Yeah, exactly. You lazy exactly. man. Don't just say them for WrestleMania. Finn Balor retained his aura. If not, you know, it didn't look very powerful. We look protected, if nothing else. But I really enjoyed this. I would give it three. I enjoyed it as much as you, maybe a bit more, because I think I'm giving this three and a half. This was tremendous stuff. Bobby Lashley looked like a big athletic beast. He was the performer he was back in Impact. So, you know, people were relatively hyped when they re-signed this guy because the improvements he made since leaving WWE. He finally turned into the performer that Vince McMahon actually wanted the first time around. And since he's come back, he's just been a big, boring bugger. Here, the real Bobby Lashley came out. Finn looked immaculate as well. I'm going three and a half. We finally got there. The main event of the evening, it was Raw Women's Champion Ronda Rousey, SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair, and the Royal Rumble winner Becky Lynch in a winner takes all triple threat match. Women main event in WrestleMania for the first time. Michael Sigrid, how do they do? Well, it's a strange one because I was very slightly underwhelmed. And a lot of these matches, I've come back around and like had some perspective of sleep to make us feel better about them. But this one, I'm, I'm still not there on it. Like, I'll probably give it four because of the sheer effort. The fact that through willpower alone, Becky managed to get the fans on board in phases. But considering, like, try to remember <coughs> what we thought this could have been. Yes. We thought this could have been yeah. to what we actually got. The finish, there was certain bits of hesitation. Charlotte didn't do a moonsault. I was good about that. I was just relatively underwhelmed. Yeah, I, I'm on the same boat. This wasn't the all-time classic a lot of us were expecting. Now, we can cut them some slack because Ronda Rousey broke her hand in this match. We can cut them some slack because of the weight of expectation. Uh, we can cut them some slack because they reportedly had to cut this thing down a little bit because Triple H versus Batista went so goddamn long. But you have to judge these matches on what are presented. These caveats mean nothing when you're rating these things. You have to be fair. For me, this wasn't a great match. It was the right outcome via a sloppy finish and a match that on a couple of occasions actually looked like it was close to falling apart. That being said, it was very exciting. It sort of got the crowd back on. Uh, it should have had a bit more heat. It would have had a bit more heat if the show wasn't so bloody long, WWE. Um, look, I still really enjoyed the match. It was very, very good. If you were to press me for a rating, which is the whole point of this video, Andy, you more on three and three quarters. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. They tried their damnness in this match. Uh, they put on a hell of a showcase. I don't know whether the ending was botched or whether we're going to get a follow-up on, on it uh, on Monday Night Raw tonight. Perhaps they're trying to keep Ronda Rousey looking strong. Who knows? Regardless of that, I think three and three quarters is a fair rating. So, judging by our system, and let's not take my skewed system into account, match of the night was unquestionably Kofi oh, Kingston versus Christ. Daniel Bryan. A masterpiece. A real, real masterpiece. Daniel a real Corbin, highlight in WrestleMania history. Let us know your thoughts and star ratings in the comment section below and don't forget to like share and subscribe loads more wrestlemania content coming your way over the next few days my thanks to andy murray and to michael sidgwick thank you for watching and we will see you soon